Welcome to EDA Playground Verilog Tutorials. My name is Victor. I'm the creator of EDA Playground. Today we're going to be covering if-else and case statements. So as opposed to previous tutorials, and this time I pre-coded -pre um, some of the code here. Um, so that way I don't have to type, but I will go ahead and explain it. So on the right side we have a simple design uh, as an example of design. And the area to focus on here is this if-else statement inside a sequential block surrounded by begin and end. So basically here, on the positive edge of a clock, we check the opcode, and if the opcode meets one of these requirements, then we drive um, a few signals. So this is a typical case that you may have in your, in your design. And this code over here on the design side, it's completely synthesizable, since design should be synthesizable, while on the left-hand side we have our test, which has an initial block and may have other things that are not synthesizable. Uh, another thing to note is I do use define statements here, these macros, so these are basically a basic search and replace, uh, so that way instead of typing out the bits over here I can just type something more descriptive, like write A, write B, read, uh, and whatever else my, my opcodes may represent. Uh, so if else statements are pretty common in other programming languages, basically you check for a condition. If that condition is met, in this case, if opcode, which is our input, a 4-bit input, meets uh, this requirement equals to write A, and write A is up here, is basically 1, then we in execute these two non-blocking statements. If it, this condition is not met, then we check the next condition, then we check the next condition with an else if, and then this one, if not, none of the above are met, then we do this. So this is the preferred way uh, to end a statement where you drive everything to X's. So that way you, that way you don't miss anything. And this is often the case uh, when you're verifying a design. You want actually X's to be added when you're missing something. That way uh, X's typically cause issues in the design and it's fairly straightforward to backtrack to figure out where those X's come from and um, so you can track down the real issue. Like, for example, if this opcode came in and one of the inputs was an X, you basically want the X to propagate through your design. So just for demonstration, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a simple test bench here. So first we, ha we have basically a two inputs, a clock and an opcode, and then two outputs, which are fairly generic outputs. They're just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so first let's do our clock. We're going to do an always statement. And we're going to give a period of 10 to our clock. But uh, in order to, for this to happen, we need to initialize a clock to something. Now let's, um, let's drive these opcode signals. So let's uh, put in a little delay here. And we'll just drive them um, straight. So drive all of them that we have. Right A. Then we'll drive right B. Then we'll drive um, our last one, which is uh, read C. And uh, just for the heck of it, let's drive it to something weird. Opcode equals or B, let's say ZZ1X. Just just for just to see what happens. Alright, we're gonna open our waves after this is done. Let's uh hopefully this will this will work. Aha, uh -huh. this is a typical issue that happens. You see, because we haven't finished, we're actually running in an infinite loop here. That's because we do not have a dollar finish statement. And our clock is continuously running. So this is this happens occasionally. And you forget the dollar finish statement. So let's add the uh, dollar finish statement here to finish our simulation. And let's run again. Okay, uh, let's see what happened here. So um, our clock is running, right? Our clock here is toggling. Then after 20 time ticks, we change the, the opcode to write A. 20 time, time, time ticks, our opcode is that, and then on the rising edge, 
our source and our write change values. Now why didn't they change values earlier? Our opcode was x. Well, that's because we probably properly designed this that when opcode was x it actually fell through and drove write and source to x. So this is proper behavior here. So source and write are x up until they change uh, when the new opcode is sensed over here. Um, then opcode is 2 and then we drive the source to 2 and write to 1 and then opcode is B um, and then we drive source and write appropriately and then finally we change the opcode to something weird and here it's shown as X but if you want to see the full bits just change it to binary and you'll see it's ZZ1X here and then uh, the output comes out X all X's again so this is this looks good right uh, so let me show you how this can be done with a case statement so instead of writing this complicated if and else if which may be completely confusing another way to accomplish pretty much the same thing is using a case statement so I'm gonna demonstrate and use one of our favorite techniques which is using if defs to define what features we want to include so we're gonna do if def and we're gonna call it use case in this case else and we're gonna finish the end if back here and now we're we're gonna put in our case statement um, so the case statement is gonna look like this case opcode so this thing in the in the quotes after the case is basically an expression so it doesn't just have to be a single variable opcode it could be opcode plus something else or any kind of other expression that you want. In this case we just use a single input, the opcode. And uh, at the end of the case you'll have end case. So in the middle of the case you're gonna have different um, different choices for this case. So you see here we did opcode equals equals write A. So in the case example we're just gonna write write A here. So it's gonna basically compare the opcode to write A so we're going to have write a colon and then we're going to execute whatever we wanted to execute and in this, this case it's a sequential block so we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste it and uh, correct our indentation here um, so that's that's how it look like and then we'll have the similar thing for all the other ones so let's do write b copy and paste this over here and then we'll have read C, begin, and then in the end, instead of um, specifying else, in the case statement, what you actually specify is default. It's also a keyword. So this is going to be our default case. So in case none of the above match, we're going to hit this default case and we're going to execute that. So this should be functionally equivalent to the previous if else, but it does look a little bit cleaner because you can clearly see it's a case statement and then we check the opcode and then if it's right A we do something, if it's right B we do something else and default is the following. So let's uh, set the define and run it. Let me increase the size a little bit so all the code can be seen and the define use case here and let's run it alright run successfully let's look at the waves so they look very similar I think they're they're identical to the previous previous run so um, I think in this case we have a success so this is your basic case statements there are a couple variants um, that are used occasionally one is called case Z so in this case, if you have a Z, Z or a question mark in your uh, case statement, specifically in the um, in the part over here, I think it's called the uh, alternative. Uh, that is treated as a don't care. So for example, I can do this: four B zero 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 Z. So this is different from the previous write A. Write A was 001. Here I'm writing 00Z. So this Z is going to be treated as a don't care. So we should match 
our write A statement over here. So our result should look exactly the same. Uh, let's try it and see. Uh, so we hit we hit one over here. Um, the, this which is our opcode, and then but we compare it to uh, Z over here, and that's that's when the write and changes to one and the source changes to zero. The write changes to one and the source changes to zero. Yes, so you see this is working. Uh, besides Z, you can also use a question mark, which is going to be the same thing. Let's run it just for demonstration purposes, and you see this is all the same. The other variant of case is case X. Now this, in addition to treating Z like a don't care, also treats X as a don't care. And I do have to mention a very important point. Besides treating X and Z as a don't care over here, if we had an X and Z in the opcode, it will also treat it as a don't care. And this is actually one of the big problems uh, with this, with these case Z and case X statements. Because oftentimes in a real design, you want your data coming in to be valid. And if any of those are X's or Z's, typically it means there's some sort of an issue unless you really truly don't care uh, about those being X's. So uh, I would suggest using these with, with a little bit of caution. Um, so let's let's run this. Run this. And see what result we get. Okay, now you might have noticed the results are similar, but they, they do look a little bit different. Right, because originally we had source and the right x's up until this point over here, but over here, but all of a sudden they're zero and one, and zero and one. Um, let me let me double check. Uh, source is zero, uh, right is one. So let's see what this matches up to. Source is zero, so they actually match up this statement over here so they actually match the first one they hit right and this is because opcode was all x's opcode was all x's so x's in a case x means don't care so that means it matched the first available one now if we swap these two together it would have matched this one so this is where the danger comes on this is why it, it's very care you have to be very careful when using case x and case z uh, all right, so I've demonstrated uh, the basic usage of case, but now let me show you another alternative which uh, you can use and which you may sometimes see being used, which uh, may look a little bit strange at first. So instead of using an expression, we actually set set case to one and we move the expression down into the alternatives. Um, so I'll t our alternatives are actually going to contain the logic. So we're actually going to use this logic as our alternatives. So we're going to compare this this logic uh, to our expression here. So this is functionally going to be very equivalent to the to the previous ones. Um, and uh, instead of using all, all those signals, we're just going to do a display statement here. Display write a just just to keep things simple. And then we're going to do write b. Over here, dollar display write b, and then we get a we can we're gonna do read c, display read c, and finally our default and our default is gonna be um, just default. We shift these so we line it up. Oftentimes people like to line up their code. Display default. Okay, let's run this. Um, this time our display statements are going to be down here. And it's as expected. Uh, first couple clock cycles are default case. These two clock cycles are default case. Remember they used to be X when we had the case and KZ. Uh, then afterwards Two cycles of write A, two cycles write B, read C, and then back to the default. Uh, okay, this concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching.